Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. Today I'll be demonstrating how to create this Christmas cake with filled chocolate baubles. We are starting off with the cake. This is an 8 inch cake that I'm using. I've cut it in half and I am filling in with buttercream. You could do just regular white buttercream. I've colored mine green because that's going to be the outside color for the cake. I'm going in with just one really thick coat all around. You can do a crumb coat first, refrigerate it, and then go on with the second coat if you want it to be super clean. Um, I kind of figured this looked pretty good. So we want to keep this creation nice and quick and easy. But yes, you could totally go in the extra mile and do the crumb coat as well. This is edible luster dust in rose gold. I've added a little bit of vodka. You could use rose water spirit um, or white vinegar or lemon juice, basically something acidic that will evaporate fast. I'm just painting it into these little plastic molds. I bought this from Spotlight, which is a craft store here in Australia, uh, but you should be able to easily find these online. They're basically the fill yourself baubles um, that you kind of put to the Christmas tree, but I decided to fill it with chocolate and it works just like a regular chocolate mold. You can go in with the second color. This is just some blue um, luster dust that I've used. And then into my melted white compound chocolate, I'm adding in vegetable oil. Vegetable oil just helps it to um, not seize when you add gel food color. Typically when you add gel food color, it kind of messes with the composition of the chocolate and then it hardens all of a sudden. If you don't want to add the vegetable oil, you can just use powdered food color instead and that works well with chocolate or oil-based colors as well. Fill in a few tablespoons into your mold and then give it a good tap on the counter, rotating it so that the chocolate has a chance to coat all of the inside. For the larger ones, I added about four tablespoons worth of chocolate and just rolling it, giving it a tap and easing that chocolate all around the mold. Once all of your molds have been filled, you can pop it onto a plate and into the fridge. I ended up using two of the medium sized ones and then the large one. I left mine in the fridge for about 20 or so minutes. And in the meantime, I've taken some fondant, colored it a goldy yellow color with gel food color, rolling it out to about a centimeter or so in thickness and cutting these teeny tiny circles. This is gonna be the little attachment to our bauble where the string would normally go. And then for the hook piece, just roll out a log of that same fondant. I like to use a fondant smoother to help um, roll it out. It just ensures that the log is the same width all the way across. Cut it down to size and then mount it onto that little coin that we have and sticking it together with a little bit of water. Once these are done, you can go back into your fridge and remove your chocolate. You want to be very gentle with this. There's like a little lip on these molds where it's like a little bud kind of comes off. You can pop your nail in between and sort of pull it apart to help release it. If your chocolate is properly set, it should not break. You can also make it a little bit thicker, so add extra chocolate in there just in case it's a bit stronger. For the filling part, I've taken a, a saucepan or like a fry pan that was on heat. I'm just gonna rub the chocolate up against it until I have a hole large enough for the items that I want to fill into the bauble. So here I'm adding some um, Ferrero Rocher chocolate, so I needed the opening to be nice and big. You can clean it up with a teaspoon and then fill in the middle with all of your decorations that you'd like to come out of the center later. For the smaller ones, I'm just adding some candy coated chocolates. These are Smarties in Australia. And then pop the bauble carefully onto your cake. If you need to, you can put like a piece of cardboard underneath and then when it's close to the cake, you kind of remove the cardboard and pop the chocolate on. That way it doesn't spill out as you're trying to place it. And then onto the top, we are applying with just a touch of water, our little hooks for the baubles. 
I'm going to paint them gold with edible luster dust and vodka made into a paint just like we did before. It's important that the color of your fondant is the same color as the paint that you're going to apply onto it. So I went for a gold yellow because I was going to be painting it in a gold paint. For the extra decorations on the side of the cake, I've taken a small number three piping tip with black buttercream and I'm creating these arches. Try not to make them all the same. I have some long, some not so long. And basically it's just gonna be like little string lights on the side of the cake with the Smarties playing the part of the lights. To bring it all together, you can pipe a few leaves onto the side of the cake, kind of cascading down the edge and then filling it at the top as well. The piping tip that I've used for this is the number 352 leaf tip. Start on the edge of the cake, working your way inside and that way the leaves pile up on each other. And we're basically hiding any imperfections and making a fuller top for the cake. This step is again totally optional, but you can create a shell border along the edge with a number, th ooh, number 32 piping tip. Or just a regular star tip will do too, whatever you have on hand. And that's it, that's how you create a filled bauble cake for Christmas. You could choose any other color for your chocolate and also for the luster dust that you use for the molds, so keep that in mind. If you do recreate it, I would love to see it. Hashtag Rosie's Dessert Spot so I can check it out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again in the next one.